Michelle, thank you very much for seeing us today. Uh, it would be great if you could just tell us a little bit about the Chef's Library and how we've come to be sitting here today. Yeah, this is a recent addition to Le Gavroche. It's a, a semi-private dining room. I call the Chef's Library. Um, and it's, it runs like a chef's table, so you've got a uh, VT, or I should say a television screen, uh, direct link to the kitchen, so I can keep an eye out on the chefs this morning. And, uh, and it, it's just a very intimate, warm place to have a, you know, a, a Gavroche experience. Absolutely, and I can vouch for that one as well. <laughs> uh, you, you took over in 91. And uh, Wild Harvest was founded in '93. Mm. Uh, obviously, been a very long-standing customer of Wild Harvest. Can you remember how the relationship began? Um, I think it was uh, initially uh, some wild produce, the back of a van, dare I say, or something similar to that scenario. Um, some really great, interesting produce that hadn't been seen before in Britain, or you know, uh, for chefs anyway. Um, and uh, and it went from there. I was I was interested. It was quality produce, and uh, and it just grew. Uh, and why is it that you think the relationship has lasted for for two decades? Um, well, it, it's no secret. I mean, it, it's quality, uh, reliability. You know, all of those things. Because uh, when you're running a restaurant like Le Gavroche, uh, you really do depend on great service and great quality produce. Mm. Uh, and the Gavroche inception was 1967. Lots of changes in the in the market, in the industry, and with suppliers. What do you think are the sort of key differences to suppliers' offerings now to restaurants such as Le Gavroche? Well, I, there are many suppliers out there, mm. and uh, so uh, you know it's very tough. You have to, as a supplier, you have to make sure that you're always on the top of your game, that you are delivering on time, that you are delivering at the right price, and then. Innovative, finding out those new ingredients that chefs are seeking, and uh, and that's what Wild Harvest does. Uh, and the industry is all about innovation. Uh, you know, what, what what do you see the sort of trends currently, and where do you see the trends sort of developing in this industry? Um, it, it's always difficult to, to look into the future, but um, I think there's a there's a huge interest now in uh, Korean style food, so a lot of pickles, a lot of fermented vegetables, mm. um, and uh, some Asian ingredients. So uh, maybe that's where you've got to start looking. Well, it's what <laughs> we have developed, yeah, absolutely. Um, but, uh, and obviously for, for you it's very important that you keep a hold of your heritage. So how do you incorporate those different trends and still stay ahead of the game, um, but also keep a hold of that, that history and the heritage of Le Gavroche? Yeah, history, heritage um, it, it is very, very important, especially uh, a place like Le Gavroche that's been around since 1967. So uh, customers come to Le Gavroche and they expect French food, they expect a certain amount of classic dishes, and uh, we, we carry them on. Um, but uh, it's not to say that we haven't lightened up, lightened up those dishes and uh, do them in a contemporary uh, manner. So, you know, it, it's, it's very important that a restaurant does evolve. Mm -hmm. And uh, otherwise, if you don't evolve, then you stay late. And that's the bin, mate. <laughs> it, it's very important that a restaurant. Speaking of stagnate. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, it didn't smell too good. <laughs> it's very important that a restaurant does evolve, because uh, if it doesn't, it stagnates, and before you know it, you know, it shut the doors. Um, so, but also, the, you know, the secret to our longevity is staying true to your roots. So, you know, we are French, we are classic. So that, but it does give us room to, to be innovative, not mm -hmm. uh, And you see a lot of trends within this, the whole molecular, uh, modern gastronomy element, a lot of mm. techniques. Yeah. How do you incorporate those within your menu and within the restaurant as well? Yeah, I mean, it, it's something that, uh, that we've always done. I mean, we've always uh, slow cooked, we've always uh, used sous vide vacuum mm. packing. In fact, I think my father was probably one of the pioneers. Uh, of, of using vacuum pack. In fact, I, I remember going to a, a course in France in 1989, uh, you know, to learn how to vacuum pack food and slow cook mm. it, and then uh, and, and for preservation purposes as well. So it's not new. It's just that it's got mainstream now. Oh, Everybody does it. Um, so you know, techniques, yes, are constantly evolving, but uh, it's uh, it's something that we are we. We evolve as well, and, uh, and yeah, I might be might be getting old and wrinkly, but there's a lot of young chefs in there that keep me going. Absolutely. So, okay, a, a few quick questions, if if I may. Um, so, favorite ingredient? 
Wow, favourite ingredient? Vanilla. Uh, okay, and favourite dish? Roast lobster with garlic butter. No vanilla in that one. No vanilla in that one, <laughs> no, no, absolutely. Okay, and then most inspired chef for you that's not a family member? Dead or alive? He? Escoffier. Escoffier, okay. I've got a couple of his books up there. <laughs> uh, oh, fantastic! Yeah, yeah, many books apart from that Alex Ferguson one, which, which I mentioned before. But there you go. Uh, okay, and um, and the, the sort of chef, chefs restaurants to watch at the moment. Do you feel? Um, you know, London is great because it, it's constantly evolving, and there's some some great. Great chefs out there. The food scene in London is fantastic. Mm. Um, one of my current favourites is the Manor in Clapham. Oh, wow. So visit there. Excellent. Take a visit. You heard it here first. <laughs> Michelle, thank you very much for your time. Pleasure. It was great.